I come as a commissioner of the International Commission Against Impunity in Guatemala to report monthly to the Secretary General, and I report yearly, more or less, to the donor countries, to the member states that support financial, political, and operationally the International Commission. And today is an opportunity to meet these member states and report and explain what we are doing in Guatemala and uh, the progresses of the mandate of the Commission supporting the Guatemalan authorities in fighting impunity. But in this opportunity, we have uh, listened to the request of the donor countries the last time that we came here uh, in the sense that why uh, we were not explaining better, more widely, what CICIG is doing, the kind of support that is providing uh, to Guatemalan citizens. And the best idea, in our view, was not explaining ourselves what we were doing, but bringing uh, Guatemalans to explain themselves how they see the International Commission, the kind of support they are receiving as a society as a human group from the United Nations and the uh, prospects of the development of the coming months or one year and a half of pending mandate of this commission. So basically what we are explaining is uh, that after two years and a half we have been able uh, to achieve some successes in fighting impunity and the numbers in my view are clear but the reasons must be explained. The numbers are that in two years we have been able to dismiss in administrative ways on corruption counts almost 2,000 policemen, which is around 15% of the uh, institution of the uh, Guatemalan National Police. We have been able to dismiss on similar counts of lack of cooperation one attorney general, ten chief prosecutors, three justices of the Supreme Court, but coming to criminal prosecution, we have sent to jail 130 individuals, the kind of people that never had been prosecuted in Guatemala before. Again, it's an honor to be here in the United Nations, and it is an opportunity to congratulate the CICIG, which is operating in Guatemala as the outcome of a joint endeavor between civil society, human rights organizations, both within the United Nations system and the state institutions in Guatemala. Today, a delegation is here of leading Guatemalan personalities to talk to the international community about the establishment of the CICIG to say that it was a successful decision. It's a firm statement against impunity in Guatemala, and the work of this commission has made it possible for many of the cases of impunity, both linked to organized crime and drug trafficking and corruption. These are being prosecuted for the first time in the history of our country. And after 36 years, years of internal unrest, we have, we are still living with the aftermath of this conflict and we want to achieve lasting peace in Guatemala. We are with the delegation today because we believe that in the role of the international community because the United Nations, we believe, has a function to be completed in Guatemala, the peace agreements must be given effect, but this will only be possible if we combat impunity, if we strengthen the role of the state, and if we work towards a future of well-being for the people of Guatemala. We know that our country is very much in public sight on account of the reprehensible crimes such as feminicide the, and other murders, but we, the people of Guatemala, are making an effort to strengthen this action that is needed by our people. We know that you have questioned, but the most important thing for 
us is that our struggle against community continues and we continue to need the involvement of the international community and we would like to congratulate the United Nations on the role it has played. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'd like to begin by saying that as a citizen of Guatemala, um, I wanted to be here this afternoon to tell you that we respect democracy in Guatemala, we respect human rights, we respect justice, but unfortunately as a journalist I have to admit that today in Guatemala impunity rules and this is nothing new. Uh, we simply have to go back to the initial period of the Guatemalan War between 1960 and 1996 when the violations of human rights in Guatemala meant that uh, we had various military governments and they created a mantle for impunity that uh, further developed and it continued to grow and extend itself into other uh, bodies. The arrival of democracy in 1986 didn't either uh, help us to directly fight impunity. Uh, we had seven governments, civilian governments that followed, all elected uh, democratically, but we nevertheless saw that what began with a mantle of impunity for military staff became a mantle of impunity for organized crime, for corruption, and in general terms for all of those who uh, attempt to achieve political and economic significance and power in the country. So Guatemala reached uh, an extreme point, and we really felt that we'd uh, touched the, the bottom of injustice, and this is when we then began to see some lights at the end of the tunnel. We uh, still can't exaggerate and be too optimistic because, as has been said here, we have to modify, change the institutions of our country, particularly the institutions that are working on investigations of crimes and then the uh, application of justice. And uh, in order to do this, we need to build a new Guatemala. And we have to recognize that at this point in time in Guatemala, there is a culture of impunity that covers all sectors of society. And uh, you can uh, operate with impunity in Guatemala. The most corrupt uh, people, organized crime, murderers, they use, uh, exploit the weakness of the institutions that have developed over this period that I've been explaining to you and benefit from it. So the, uh, the situation in Guatemala is what has uh, brought us here today. As a journalist, this is the first time I've taken part in a mission of this kind to explain the situation in Guatemala uh, on a daily basis. This is what journalists do uh, on the pages of the newspapers. More than 5,000 uh, assassinations, uh, 6,000 in fact last year, and uh, less than 600 uh, criminal proceedings um, to deal with that. So that shows you the level of impunity that exists. And that's why we are here to tell you that uh, in uh, Guatemala we still continue to dream of a democracy that is not just a participatory democracy but a, a, a democracy where the institutions of democracy actually work for the benefit and security of the population. Um, the United Nations has given the impetus to this in uh, CISIG. And in our society, the majority of uh, areas of society are supporting the work of CISIG, and we hope that it will continue to work as an independent commission and will be strengthened and try to bridge this gap, because we have to recognize that as Guatemalans, the solution to our problems has to be our solution. Uh, it would have been ideal if we could have done this uh, over the, uh, with the change from military to civilian government, uh, but what we now need is the help of a, mission, a commission such as CISIG. Uh, we need their help and the important thing is that we can try to close this gap together so that when the mandate of CISIG comes to an end, the tasks which still will be outstanding will be accomplished by Guatemalans. Thank you. 